So I'm today going to talk about Pack again. That's a tool that helps you to create PHP extensions. First, what is a PHP extension? A PHP extension is a loadable module that can provide functions, classes, and other stuff implemented in C, but usable from the PHP language level. And you can write the PHP extensions either in C, in C++, or if you're very brave, you can use Ball and Delphi on Windows. <laughs> but I will only cover C in C++ because I have no idea about the, the Delphi stuff. And you can use PHP extensions two ways. You can compile them into the PHP binary so that they're always there. Or you can compile them as shared libraries and load them at runtime. And you do not have to have different codes for that, just different way of compiling them. And why would you use a PHP extension instead of just implementing functionality in PHP itself? One reason for that is performance. Native C code performs faster than interpreted or byte code compiled PHP code. And the other reason, and that's what I mostly use it for, is when you already have a C or C++ library that provides the functionality you want to have, then you just want to have a PHP wrapper around that existing library instead of re-implementing stuff in PHP. Disadvantages of the extension approach are they're at least partly platform dependent. So if you use an extension that relies on a native library on an operating system, that library might not exist on a different system. And an extension compiled on one system does not work on a different operating system or hardware architecture, so you have to recompile it for each platform. Then you need a bit more knowledge to write extensions than for just writing PHP code. But this tool is exactly there to keep most of this away from you. So you need to know a little bit about C. But the aim of the generator is to shield you as much as possible from knowing all the PHP API details. And one disadvantage of extensions is when you're using a shared or managed host, you may not be able to convince your ISP to run your extension on that machine. So extensions are only an option when you have control over the web server or the application platform you want to use them on. And PHP or the PHP source itself comes with a very basic tool, a very basic script called Xscale that can be used to create a very basic skeleton of an extension. But it's really very, very basic. It just gives the first idea how the extension code should look like. And it has several issues. First, it is a mix of shell script, stream editor, and, oh, that should be AWK, <laughs> and AWK scripts. So it's a mess to maintain. Then it only generates subcode for PHP functions, but not for resources, classes, constants, any options. Last time I looked, it still used the old uh, PHP parameter parsing API, which is now deprecated. And it also generates only very basic uh, configuration files that you have to tweak yourself to be able to even just compile your extension. And very important, every time you run it, after you modify it, some of its input, it will overwrite all the code changes you have put into the skeleton template it generates. So you more or less have to be sure on your first run that everything you have as input for it is all you need. Or you have to pull out your changes, rerun it, put your changes back in again. And Packagen tries to solve most of this. It first started as a, just a rewrite of Xscale. 
using only PHP instead of the shell and AWK and Stream Editor Mix. So it's pure PHP code now. No external binaries required anymore. It does require PHP 5, which should not be an issue by now anymore because uh, PHP 4 is at end of life anyway. And it uses some of the classes that come with the basic pair installation, but it does not need any extra pair packages beside the pair core itself. And it is actually implemented by two packages that are generated. There's a base package, CodeGen, which is now used by different code generators. And then there is the specific code gen for Peckle, and that has all the PHP specific part. What I also did is, on the same base package, I created a generator for MySQL user-defined functions and one for MySQL plugins, but that's not the scope of this talk. So then over time, it has become more than just replacement for the old script. For one, it uses the new parameter parsing API. It has been almost forever now. And besides just PHP functions, it also supports generating code for resource types, for PHP classes in PHP 5, for constants, for PHP INI configuration directives. And it creates working configuration files so that you can uh, compile it right away. On the Unix side, it's config.m4. And on the Win Windows side, it is the config.w32 file. And I only can guarantee that the Unix side works, but I have not, had, not heard any bug reports about the Windows side, so I assume it either works or nobody uses it. But I'm pretty sure there are users, so it seems to work. And a main difference to the old uh, Excel script is Excel only got as input a list of functions and parameters and only created a function skeleton. And with the PackerGen specification file, you can embed C code right into your specification. And as long as you only change code in the specification file, you can just regenerate, regenerate uh, your source code all the time without losing any of the changes you apply to the code. And it also has support for generating PHP uh, test cases. So you can test stuff you, already, uh, you did and it can also provide uh, documentation files in docput XML that can be put into the PHP manual. So you do not have to learn all the API details. You do not have to do, learn all the details of test cases. You do not have to learn docbook. It's all already more or less uh, out of the box. And PHP, uh, Pack again requires PHP to create code. But as long as you do not use any object-oriented features, like classes or interfaces, then the code it, it generates and the extensions it generates will also work with PHP 4 because most of the API is the same in PHP 4 and 5 and it knows how to deal with the small differences. Yeah. To install the, the tool, you need to install the two pair packages that it consists of or just say install code and Peckle and all its dependencies. And then how does it input actually look like? So for a very simple minimal extension that does not yet do anything but that compiles, it can be loaded. You need a small XML file like this. So the basic input format is an XML format. And the very basic extension is you just have an extension tag container, specify the name of the extension, 
and that's already all you need for getting something compilable. And then you call the package end tool, give it that file as input, and it will generate this bunch of files. The important ones are configuration file for Unix, configuration file for Windows, uh, package description so that you can submit this package to the package rep <coughs> repository. It used to support both the old and new package format. The latest version just does the package a version 2 file. Then it generates a C header file, a C source file. This is the generate in more. This was a project file for Visual Studio. And it creates an XML file for the documentation. And then to generate a working extension, you just first use package to generate the code. And it will create a directory with the base name of the extension. In there, you have to run PHP eyes that configures the source for the PHP version you're using, your local installation. Then usually you just have to run configure without any options. Unless you're using some external libraries, then you may have to specify where these are in the file system. And then it's make to compile the extension. Then you can use make test to write, uh, to execute all the test cases it generated. And finally, make install to make it available on your system. And to see that it actually works, you have to put an extension directive in your PHP INI file to load the extension. The extension file name is the base name of the extension and either .so on Unix systems or .dll on Windows systems. And you have to restart your web server so that PHP does actually load, uh, load the extension. When you then check the PHP info functions output, you will have a block in there for this extension. And all we tell you is it is the unknown extension because you have not specified anything yet. And it has version 0.0.1 .0 development because you didn't specify any other version yet and the date the source was generated. And the first thing you can add to the extension is just some extra meter information so that you get a more fancy uh, info output. So you can add a summary line that is used in PHP info. You can add a longer description that will go into the doc book uh, uh, documentation code generated. You can specify the license that is used to put appropriate uh, copyright headers into the source files. And it's also needed for the uh, package file. You can specify a release version, a release date, a release state, and release notes. This group of tags is exactly like it is in the package.xml file. So it's more or less just copied over. And you can add maintainer info so that you have, so that you can see your own name in the PHP info output. And so that extension still doesn't do anything useful, but it provides a more fancy PHP info output. And I do not have this in the slides, but you can even specify a logo image as a GIF, PNG, or JPEG. And then you will have your logo besides the info entry, just like on the top of PHP info output, you have the standard PHP logos. So if you really want to advertise your extension, you can even do that. Yeah, but now for some real code, because that's what it's really about. And most of the time, 
what you want to do in the extension is add new functions to PHP. So this is an example to add a very simple Hello World function to PHP using the extension generator. And what you need for each function is a function tag that specifies the name of the extension. So this is the, oh, the name of the function. So this is to introduce a hello function to PHP. You specify a proto type that gives the return type and parameters. Here we only return a string, no parameters, very simple case. Summary and description are for the documentation that is generated. And this is all the C code you need for this function that returns the hello world string. It's just return string hello world. The one at the end says that this string is to be copied. Usually you want to have that. Um, so just one line of code gives you the PHP function. And even better, to test whether your function really works, you can add a test block with the PHP code that should be executed for testing. So here it's just calling the hello function and using echo to produce output. And then in the result block, you can put in the expected result. And this will generate a PHP T test case, the same format that is used by the PHP source test system itself. And when you have compiled your extension and do make test, all of these test cases are actually executed and checked. So now that we actually have a function in our extension, what is additional generated is registration code for that new function, the actual implementation code, a test case file and doc work documentation that uses the prototype information and the summary and description tag contents. So with just how many happy? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's just nine lines of XML and embedded code. You already get all this ready to use. You don't have to learn how to document the functions that comes out of the box. You don't have to know the exact format of the test files or how to invoke them. All there already. And this is what the actual generated code in the C file looks like. So it's a bit more than just the one line we had in XML. It's all the parameter parsing code block that's very simple here because there are no parameters, so if any had been passed to the function call, you would just get a wrong parameter count error. And you have the appropriate comments on top of the code and the format expected by a coding style and everything, but just actually only writing one line of code. And this is what the generated doc book documentation looks like. I'm not going to explain the details of this. It's just, you can see it has a summary in it, a description, the prototype in the right format for docbook, and the make file that is generated even provides you with the tools to generate HTML and PDF out of this, but just say, saying make HTML or make PDF if you have the required docbook tool chain installed. So now for a function a bit more interesting because it actually does something and has parameters. This is a simple function that just adds two numbers. And the important thing it is it does have two parameters. One mandatory and one optional that defaults to one if not set. And again, as the actual functionality is simple, it just multiplies the n and m parameters and the dummy function is, uh, the dummy variable here is a dummy just to show that you can have your own variables in here. And the code for this is a bit more. 
first of all, it defines two local C variables of the appropriate type. So in the prototype, it said integer. Internally, we use C long for that. It also gives the default values. So M will be set to 1 if not otherwise specified. It produces the parameter parsing uh, calls for you. And then here's the actual code block with the extra variable. And so a C does not allow to, as C only allows to declare variables at the beginning of a code block. We add a dummy code block here. Most compilers, we would not use, uh, need the do and while zero. But for some older compilers, this is required. So this is the only portable way to do it. But you can choose in your specification whether you want to produce C or C++ code. And if you said, I want C++ output, then it will not output these two lines because they're not needed for C++. C++ allows to put, function, uh, put new declarations in the middle of the code. So as you've seen on the slide before, for each parameter you have the prototype. You can rely on a variable being there by the same name and the appropriate type already. So in your C code snippet, you do not have to know how PHP internally stores values. You can use the C variable types right away. And for string parameters, there are actually two C variables. One with the base name that is pointed to the input string. And a second parameter with an actional underscore len suffix that gives you the actual string lengths. So you can even deal with uh, binary strings that have zero markers in them. This is how PHP types map to C types. So if you sp specify a Boolean parameter, it becomes a send bool. It's a special defined type. A PHP integer becomes a long in C. A PHP float becomes a double. A string becomes a char pointer. And then there are more complex types like arrays, objects, resources, callback functions, and parameters that accept any type. For these, you will only get a ZVAL structure pointer, which is a pointer to the data structure that holds a PHP variable values internally. So for the simple types, you do not have to know anything about ZVALs. For the complex types, you still have to deal with that API detail. Um, very often you need what we in PHP call resources. Well, you can sort of think of them as internal object handles. A typical example of a resource that needs to be carried on between, between function calls is a POSIX file pointer. So if I wanted to create an extension that provides the file input output functions, they are already in the standard extension in PHP, but if I wanted to re-implement them, I would first have to re define a file resource. Here I named it my underscore file. I have to specify a payload type. This can be any C type. And I can specify whether the data for this, whether the memory for this should be allocated and freed automatically or not. And for each resource type, there has to be a destructor to clean up. Um, when the resource gets out of scope or the script ends. So for a file resource, it would just be the F close call. So this is how to specify a file resource or any other complex data type you have in a C library you want to use. And this is how to return a resource from a function. So this is my personal copy of the fopen function. This prototype says it returns a my file resource and gets the file path I want to open and in which mode I want to open it. And all I have to do here is do whatever it needs to create the resource. Here, 
file open call with the parse mode, and just assign it to the special variable return underscore res. So this is all you need to do. And from that on, the generator knows this is actually a POSIX file handler and creates all the registration uh, code needed so that it becomes visible from PHP. And on failure, instead of assigning a value to return underscore rest, you just do a return false. Or maybe do error message output first and then return calls. Well, this is a function that uses all a resource once again. In a prototype, we just say we have a parameter that is a resource of the my file type, and its name is fp. And again, in the function, you can use a C variable by the name fp that you can, for example, pass in all the f open, f close, f read, f write functions. Or here, what we want to do is just free the resource again in the close function. And again, if you look at the code that's actually generated, especially for creating a resource that is quite a bit longer and knows some of the API details. Yeah, you can also specify constants. Constants are simple. They just have a name, a type, and a value, and an optional description string. And as a special case, the type always define, uh, defaults to integer. So if you do not give it a type, it's integer. And if you do not specify a value, then the constant attack assumes you have a constant, a C constant foobar somewhere, and you just want to copy that into your PHP code. So if you have a lot of numerical constants, as you often have in C header files, you do not have to say, okay, this is the name and type and the actual constant I want to mirror, but just use the short form of the constant tag. You can also uh, specify intern global variables that you can use to carry state within your extension. Usually you only need these to implement PHP I and I options, which are special case of globals. So once again, to make it easy, just specify the name, type, default value of your uh, configuration option. You can specify a C function that is to be called on updates to this configuration setting. And you can specify uh, the access level for the it can be changed at runtime, only in the server configuration, or in local HD access files. But still, you do not need to know any of the details, how to register this, how this works internally. The, op uh, the uh, option will show in your PHP INI output, and everything is just there. And if you want to create extension that relies on an already existing library. Then you have to add this dependency information. Like here, there's a dependency on a C library. In this case, I know this library is only available on Unix. So a platform, you can say Unix, Windows, or all. Mac OS counts as Windows. <laughs> And then you have to specify with name of the library for libraries uh, maintained with package config. You can specify that as an extra uh, mode. And you can put in a required version. If it's not package config maintained, you just say with name equals without the extra tags. Uh, you then just once again have to give the name of the library. It's a bit redundant, but I haven't come up with a more clever idea yet. Uh, if you need to include header files to use the library, 
he also specified them here. So here I need two header files. I just say here that I need them. And Packergen will generate a configure test for the library at the required header files. And it will also generate the include statements for these libraries. So this is the only place where you have to mention the library and header file names. And some libraries may have a functionality that is not always available. Like in the Cairo graphics extension I did, there are backends like PostGrip output, PostScript output, PDF output, SVG output that are not always compiled into the library itself. And if they're not in the library itself, we can't have them in the PHP extension either. But we still want to be able to build the PHP, the PHP, <coughs> the PHP extension if the functionality is missing. So it is possible to add an if condition to certain tags. And so if you say if equals name in a certain tag, the actual code generated will be if def this name or this condition. And you have conditional compilation of functionality only if the required feature is actually there. This works with PHP uh, with functions, resources, constants, and classes. And it can become very boring to have an if condition in each function that goes by a certain feature. You can also use a group tag that sets it as a default for a group of things. Well, this is something I only added recently. It is now possible to define a group. So this is what I did for the Cairo extension. There's a group named PDF which will only be compiled in if have PDF is defined. And in the group are all the functions that rely on the PDF output capability. And I only have to put the if have PDF in there once now instead of into every function tag. And also in the generated code, there's just one if def and end if, enclosing all the options where before it was for every function if they have PDF function and if, if they have PDF, which leads to pretty ugly code. Um, besides functions and constants, you can also uh, do classes in extensions and interfaces. So what is supported is you can specify, you can create classes. You can even have class inheritance. Have a class in an extension inherit from another native class. Classes can of course have methods, properties, and constants. It's also possible to create native interfaces. On methods and properties, you can have the public, protected, or private attribute, although private doesn't really make sense for an extension, because that would say you can also only call it from in the, within the C code of the extension. And it doesn't make sense to have a private PHP level function. You would just have a static function in your extension and call that right away using a C call instead of going up to the PHP level and down again. And it is possible to have type hints on uh, parameters. So class tag is again simple. You give the class a name. Optionally, you can say which class it extends. And you can specify whether it's abstract or not, and final or not. It works the same way as in userland PHP. Only the name is needed, everything is optional. Everything else is optional. And to add methods to a class, you just put regular function tags within the class body. So you've already seen how that works. And methods have some extra attributes that functions can't have. So that's access level, public, protected, private. 
whether the method is abstract or not, final or not. And it's a special feature if you know the X MySQL I extension, the new MySQL I extension in PHP. This gives you both an object-oriented and a procedural API for the same functionality. And you can have the same here. You can just say this procedure, uh, this message shall also be known under the procedural name given here. Then it's just a regular function. And you can call the method in two ways, either by invoking a, the method on an existing object or by calling the procedural version and passing the actual object in as the first parameter. Once again, just one extra XML attribute and all the code is generated for you automatically. Um, class properties have a name, access level, type, and value. Um, to access them from the C level, the special prop get and pop put macros. Uh, there's one uh, one variant of each of these for every of the basic types. So the, there's one for long values, one for double values, and one for string values. Interfaces are pretty simple because they can't carry any code. They just specify prototypes. So here, an interface is created by the name foo. It extends another interface that already exists by the name bar. And this interface foo requires every class implementing this interface has a method named bar with this prototype. Yeah, that's more or less all the basic features provided by the generators. There are a few small more details, which are all covered in the tools manual. And also for every feature and every specification tag it has, there is an example in the source code repository in the docs examples directory. Sorry for the long URL there. <laughs> And uh, so if the manual is not clear on how a certain tag is to be used, usually there is an example showing how to use it in practice. So if you want to know how to do an interface, how to do a class, how to use resources, it's all the examples, and the examples are used to actually test the generator. So all these examples should be working code. Yeah, and... A little bit of advertising if you're interested in the PHP extension API on a deeper level than what is needed uh, to use the generator. If you want to know all about it, then the best documentation you can get is this book by Sarah. That's, it's a bit of a shame, but there is no good uh, API documentation in the PHP manual itself. So. If you want to have it in, uh, explained in detail in one place, this is the only usable book for that. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, and some, just an example for extension that have been generated with this code. There is a UID extension in the Packer repository, uh, HTML parse, and the Cairo graphics wrapper. All of these have been uh, created using this tool. And some of the guys in the back there have seen me doing the Cairo stuff. And they're not listening. <laughs> and actually, the basics of the Cairo library. Uh, Cairo library wrapper up to the point where we could create the first images using just PHP code were only a few hours after we started working on it. If you had to do it all by hand, writing a config M4 file by hand, 
doing all the parameter parsing stuff, all the boring repetitive stuff that you can't, never can't, can remember if when you haven't used it for a while. If we had to deal with that too, it would probably take way longer than just one evening in a pub to create a extension capable of creating graphics output in different formats. Okay, questions? No questions? It's not good. Okay, then, thank you.